Harry's wife, the lesson one narcissist part 65.5. Hello, I'm HG Tudor. I am going to take a wade through a number of news articles in order to enable you to understand more about the dynamics of narcissism, primarily involving Harry's wife. I leave it for you to determine the veracity of the articles themselves, and I provide you with the analysis. Many of you will be aware that the final of European Championships took place last Sunday. England were defeated on penalties by Italy. Three black players of the England team were then subjected to abhorrent racist abuse. There's been condemnation of such behaviour, and if you want to understand what is behind such behaviour with regard to why people operate in such a manner, then you really ought to listen to my video, Who Are the Racists? You will find that instructive and enlightening. Of course, the issue of racism looms large with regard to certain allegations made by Harry's wife, and of course, provides a further opportunity for her to remain prominent in news articles, which self-serves, of course, for the relevant media outlets looking to sell advertising space and obtain clicks, but also satisfies her near constant need to assert control. The racist comments and Smears and slurs that have emerged has prompted Prince William to speak out, but this has caused him to walk straight into a storm with regard to the supporters of Harry's wife and the observations of other commenters. Indeed, there are a number of news articles that today focus upon this. I'm just going to touch on a small number of them demonstrating various aspects of the narcissistic dynamic, starting with news.com.au. Popping down under, so throw another pawn on the barbie. G'day Australia. The article reads, Prince William's racism tweet raises questions about Harry's wife. He's rightly spoken out against the abhorrent racist abuse of English soccer players. William seems to be forgetting about his own shortcomings. And there is an article by Daniela Elsa. The article starts. Being a king in waiting used to be a much easier gig. You opened plaques, christened a few boats, and lent your dab sword hand to investitures. The biggest threats to a future sovereign's equanimity were boredom and gout. Pity Prince William then, whose pre-throne years have so far been filled with a rancorous brotherly feud the fracas that has been Megxit, and the bleak march of male pattern boldness. Well, I think that he's actually done quite a few other things besides all of that. He's married a delightful wife, had three children, and has presided over various royal events and royal appearances. But anyway, the article continues. Now, the 30-year-old and future King William V has got himself involved in the racism row that is dominating the United Kingdom. On Sunday, the English team lost to Italy in the Euro 2020 finals, dashing the dreams of a nation who had not tasted world stage glory since their 1997 Eurovision win. Nice dig at the palms there from down under. In the wake of the team's loss, the three players who had missed the penalty goals. You don't have a penalty goal, it's a penalty shootout. If you can't miss the goal, if you scored a goal, it means that you've not missed. Anyway, in the wake of the team's loss, the three players who had missed the penalty goals faced a wave of racist abuse online. William promptly came out swinging, demonstrating, of course, that he finds such behaviour unpleasant and that he has, because of his emotional empathy and his empathic traits, the ability to recognise such behaviour as inappropriate and, of course, in his position as heir to the throne speaks out about it using that platform. The article explains that he posted a personal tweet on the Kensington Palace Twitter account, saying he had been sickened 
by the deluge of hate the players were facing. It is totally unacceptable that players have to endure this abhorrent behaviour, he wrote. It must stop now, and all those involved should be held accountable. W. Now, this comment, of course, from William, is not done to assert control because he isn't a narcissist. It's done because, as a normal individual, he has emotional empathy. He recognises that the situation is wrong. He also recognises that it behooves him, as the position that he has involved with the President of the Football Association and as heir to the throne, that is the appropriate thing for him to speak out about it. And he clearly believes in it. The article continues, It was a direct and vociferous condemnation, which was fitting given he will one day lead the nation and has a moral imperative here, along with the fact that he is the President of the Football Association. But despite unequivocally being the right thing, his decision to speak up on this occasion is deeply problematic. This is not the first time the issue of racism has collided with the royal family in recent months, yet the handling of these two situations could not be more starkly different. In March, as a global audience of 50 million watched on, Harry's wife, the Duchess of Sussex, revealed to Oprah Winfrey that during her first pregnancy in 2019 with son Archie, an unnamed member of the royal family, had raised concerns about how dark his skin might be. Her husband, Prince Harry, she said, had been party to several conversations with family on the subject. You will recall, of course, that this assertion, being done by a narcissist, is part of triangulation, smearing and a pity play. It isn't done out of any genuine emotional empathy. It is a self-serving gesture. She, as an unaware narcissist, doesn't realise that. But that is what is behind it. There are three potential outcomes with regard to what was said. It may well be that somebody did make a racist comment, and therefore Harry's wife was leveraging the majority perspective truth for her own needs. We can do that. We see something that you regard as the truth, and we commandeer it in the same way. So, for example, a narcissist would condemn the behaviour of racists, not because the narcissist actually cares, but because everybody else sees the behaviour of that racist, the narcissist does also, and condemns it as part of the assertion of control and facade management, pursuing two of the four prime aims, either consciously where an aware narcissist, or unconsciously where an unaware narcissist. It is not done, however, from a position of emotional empathy because we have none, but we are able to commandeer that majority perspective truth for our own needs. Secondly, it will be commandeered as a half-truth, so that somebody might have made the comment not as a concern, but rather simply, I wonder what he'll look like, in the same way as, will he have ginger hair like his father? And it wasn't a racist observation at all, but of course, Harry's wife's narcissism portrays it as such for the purposes of her assertion of control. Basically, her narcissism resurrects the event and puts a different slant on it. Those of you who have been ensnared with narcissists will be all too familiar with this twisting of the truth. Thirdly, it's nowhere near the truth, and it never happened. Nobody ever raised a concern, and the narcissism caused her to invent this for the purpose of the assertion of control. If you want to understand more about this, please listen to my video, The Truth, The Half Truth, and Nowhere Near the Truth, and that'll help you understand how the narcissistic perspective utilises these matters for our benefit. In this instance, it's highly likely that what occurred was the use of the half-truth, that somebody raised an innocent inquiry as to the colour of his archie skin, not in a racist way, but in a similar way as to, I wonder what colour eyes he'll have, who will he look like, his mother or his father, what colour hair will he have, etc. And of course, her narcissism seizes on this to accuse the family of racism as part of a smear, an indirect assertion of control, and the garnering of fuel and control from third parties by way of sympathy. The article continues, both Harry's wife and Harry refused to name which member of the Windsors they were referring to, but no matter their selective reticence, the damage to the royal family's image had already been done. 
The world, aghast, fascinated and totally gobsmacked, swiftly turned to the palace to see how they would respond to such stunning accusations. The world waited, and waited, and then waited some more. It was 40 hours after the TV takedown aired that Buckingham Palace put out a frighteningly economic 61-word statement on behalf of Her Majesty, saying that some recollections may vary, and that the matter would be dealt with privately. Basically, while the world reeled, the royal house clammed up, refusing to directly engage in any sort of detailed full-throated rejoinder. Well, of course, the author of this article is putting the slant on it as to say that everybody was aghast. No, they weren't. Many people didn't actually care. And, of course, there'll be those that would appreciate and acknowledge the stance that was taken by Buckingham Palace. Namely, this is a private matter. It was said privately. Let's find out what was actually said. And then we will move from there. Also, remember that members of the royal family will also, at this juncture, have been fully familiar with the behaviour of Madame, and therefore it would not surprise them that she would make such an unfounded allegation. It's likely that this was a half-truth situation. The palace knew this, and rather than go riding into battle and engaging it directly, of course, which is not something you should ever do with the narcissist, they adopted the, the sensible approach, which was, this is a private matter, we'll deal with it privately, and investigate it further. That, of course, starves the narcissist of fuel. It doesn't give them the control that they crave. And, of course, the approach is a sensible one. It was a private matter. And, of course, given that it would have been the half-truth, it was not a situation of it being a racist comment at all. The article continues, It later emerged that there had been a generational divide among royal family members about whether the race allegation should be specifically addressed in the Queen's statement and whether they should issue a stronger, firmer rebuttal of the Sussex's interview, The Times has reported. Accordingly, either way, her position was not accepted. The only direct pushback against Harry's wife's claims came when William broke ranks and five days after the interview told journalists during an outing to a London school, we are very much not a racist family. But it was too little, too late. Well, that's a matter of opinion of the author of this piece. As the dust settled, and no matter with, and no matter William's comment, the rot in the royal brand had set in. The monarchy, now tainted with the indelible stain of racism, was suddenly starting to leave a very bad taste in the public's mouth. The Queen and Co. looked imperious and out of touch. The firm seemed totally blinkered to the fact that the Sussex's open revelations were not being aired in a political or cultural vacuum. But all this was coming less than a year after Black Lives Matter protests across the United Kingdom, the toppling of colonial era statues, and the world was in the midst of a global reckoning on race. Ultimately, the palace's strategy was disastrous, that's a matter of opinion, and their response proved deeply wanting, something they have done very little since then to try and address. And yet, despite all of this, William and Prince Charles managed to deliver outspoken forthright interventions on race this week. The Prince of Wales Clarence House social media accounts also came out against the racist abuse being levelled at the English team, recognising the rich diversity of cultures which make this country so special, and in many ways unique, lies at the heart of what we can be as a nation. That the royal family, the article explains, failed to meet the challenges of the Harry's wife race storm, but can, when they want, move so swiftly and forcefully, leaves the palace exposed to charges of blatant hypocrisy. Well, it might leave them open to charges of blatant hypocrisy, but this author is missing a fundamental point. The racist comments that appeared in social media towards England's footballers were plain to see. You could see the monkey emojis. You could see the banana emojis. You could use, see the word, the use of the word, use of the N word. You could see that there were comments made to get back to your own country, get out of my country and so forth. They were screenshotted across Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and so forth. There was the evidence that it occurred, and there was clear and plain evidence. And it happened repeatedly, not just once, not one allegation, but scores, if not hundreds of them. Therefore, not only was this on a scale that was greater, 
but there was clear and obvious evidence. Hence, that is why they've spoken out. The situation does not draw a direct comparison at all with Harry's wife. With her, it's likely that this was a half-truth. And also remember, the members of the royal family have been well versed in her behaviour prior to this. Parts passive of this series repeatedly demonstrate the manner in which she conducted herself with other members of the household. Therefore, she's not going to receive a particularly sympathetic response because they're alive to her behaviour. Contrast that. Messrs Rashford, Sarka and Sancho have not done anything that would invite people to question their bona fides of their behaviour. Harry's wife has. You yourselves, listening to this, would be far more predisposed to somebody who's not doing you any ill than you would be towards somebody who has repeatedly caused problems for you within your family. That is a matter of common sense and natural human response. Accordingly, the differing response isn't hypocrisy at all. It's quite simply this. There was evidence that demonstrates these footballers have been repeatedly racially abused and also William holds the position of the President of the Football Association, necessitating him to speak out on it. With regard to Harry's wife, not only was it not a clear-cut instance of racism, and indeed the fact of the recollections may vary, but add that as against her general behaviour as a narcissist, the family decided to take the private matter and not throw more fuel on the fire. They could have responded, of course, by saying, that's absolute horseshit, nothing like that was ever said. The comment was a polite inquiry along the lines of what will his hair look like, what will his eyes look like. But she, in accordance with her general demeanour and needs, has twisted it. But of course they didn't. They downplayed it. Not because they regard racism as a matter that isn't of seriousness, but quite simply that there is a huge gulf between what she alleges, and remember it was an allegation, what they will recall that has happened, her behaviour, and what is clear and obvious with regard to the treatment of the three England footballers. They cannot be placed on the same level. They are completely different. And therefore to suggest that, the, as the article says, he could have pushed back in terms of the specific incident, the former suit star raised, whilst also acknowledging the monarchy's dismal history when it comes to race, the fact is, the article asks, it comes down to this, if the royal family and William can take a stand now, why not then? They didn't do so then for the reasons that I have explained. And of course, people are being duped into seeing that this is hypocritical. It's not. It's quite simply that the members of the royal family recognise that this was manipulative behaviour of hers, that such a comment was not made in the manner that she portrayed it. Moreover, the fact that she aired it in the manner that she did. Did she go and confront the person about it and say, why did you say this? No. She didn't, because at the time, her need for control meant that it was not necessary. However, at a later juncture, as a consequence of the need to assert control over millions of people watching the interview, her narcissism revised history, dragged this out from the box of tricks as a means to embark on a pity play with the squeezing out of the crocodile tear, and necessitating the what from Oprah and to now state that the situation of the England footballers is anywhere near to the situation that Harry's wife alleges is quite frankly ridiculous. Racism of course is an important issue that can be recognised and I have explained in my video who are the racists as to what is behind certain behaviour in that regard, where it stems from, who are the individuals that engage in it. Both in terms of allegations of racism, but by in terms of racist behaviour, some narcissists are behind that. But it's also the case that narcissists will play the race card, as they'll play the mental health card, as they'll play the gender card, as they'll play the sexual orientation card, by way of provocation, smearing, pity play, triangulation, in order to pursue those prime aims. Calling out that they are the victim, in order to assert control, draw fuel, possibly seek character traits and of course residual benefits. Alleging that somebody's use of a word was racist, that somebody didn't take into account 
the fact that they're easily triggered and they had mental health issues. Such behaviour merely undermines the position for those that are genuinely affected by the serious matters of racism, mental health, etc. But those of our kind, the narcissists, that engage in this repeated use of playing the relevant card, playing the victim, doling out the pity plays, all forms of unconscious manipulation by them, because for the most part these will be unaware narcissists that do this, they not, under, not only undermine the position with regard to genuine victims, but what they also do is often do it in a transparent fashion, and this is what Harry's wife has done. Her allegations about supposed racism don't stand up, and certainly don't bear comparison to the situation that the three England footballers have experienced. Furthermore, as has been analysed previously, the allegations appertaining to mental health also don't stand up to scrutiny in terms of the actions that could be taken. And of course, we all know Piers Morgan's views in that respect, where he didn't believe her. It demonstrates, of course, how the raising of this results in the assertion of control for Harry's wife, and how people don't understand how her behaviour is impacting upon other people. And it's important to draw the distinction between what happened with her through the lens and the prism of narcissism compared to the situation that has been experienced by the three England footballers. Join me in part six for further analysis of this matter.